Hey traders, I wanted to make a short video for you today. Hopefully it'll be short. Sometimes I'm long-winded on the true definition of diversification. Everybody knows that phrase. Everybody uses it. Nobody understands it or truly, I believe, has it unless they view it in a certain way. So I wanted to talk about that today. Okay, let's get into this because, uh, of course, diversification is important. It's one of the first things that we all learn as traders. And yet I think it is uh, grossly misrepresented in terms of what its uh, true meaning is if you look inside of most of uh, individuals' portfolios. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, you know, a, a lot of times uh, people will say, well, I'm very well diversified. I have 15 different positions on. And uh, yet you look at them and they either are all similar underlines. So maybe they're all equities. And even if they're uh, all equities on top of that, maybe they're even in the same sectors. You see people, you know, very weighted up with gold stocks or tech stocks or healthcare stocks or real estate stocks. So they're non-diversified there with their underlines. Uh, and then they're very rarely diversified with their delta. One of the things that we take a, a lot of offense at, at with people online or people that uh, see our YouTube videos, but they're not in our trading community is the naysayers that say, well, your results look really good, but what would happen if the market went down? And of course that's offensive because it's implying that all we have are long positions. So this is what you see quite often, right? People will say, I'm very well diversified. I have 15, 20 different positions on. Great. Let's say that the Dow crashes by a thousand points tomorrow. What happens with all 30 of your positions? And most people, not everybody, but most people will say, well, they're all probably going to lose money. Okay. So in that essence, you're not diversified. You are quote unquote spread around. There's a difference between just spreading your money around and actual have, actually having true asset allocation diversification in your portfolio. So let's get into that and let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, the way that we view this in our portfolio, this is I think probably the first place to start is explaining to you how we view this and approach this in our trading, okay, in our trading community. So what is real diversification? Well, Kurt Kofta, uh, who is the father of Gestalt psychology, we, we talk about Gestalt a ton inside of our trading room. Kurt said, uh, it has been said, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. It is more correct to say that the whole is something else than the sum of its parts. Because summing up is a meaningless procedure, whereas the whole part relationship is meaningful. Now, what the heck does that all have to do with trading? Well, the, the, the whole is more important than the sum of the parts. At the end of the day, there are so many ways, and we've talked about this in other videos, how you can quantify your results with trading. Uh, Win-loss ratios uh, are important. We have several trades that we have done now going on three or four years. We do them every week. We've never had a single losing trade. So, you know, win-loss ratios, that, that can be an important way to quantify a trade and shows you the consistency of the result. 
doesn't really talk about dollars and cents though. So you can talk about percentages. You know, I, I made 4%, I made 10%, I made 6%, whatever that number is. And that can have some meaning at the end of the day. You can talk about dollar amounts. You know, how much actual cash did you make today? I made $370 today, great. All of these metrics are ways to be able to measure our success or failure. Uh, as a trader, but for us in our trading room, at the end of the day, the only thing, and I mean the only thing that we care about is net lick, our net liquidation value. That is the, that, that, that's, that's, that's the, the bottom line to what your trading is doing to your income potential and net worth, right? At the end of the day, if you liquidated your entire portfolio to cash, how much would you have? Would you have more today than you had the day before? Would the day before be more than the day before that? In other words, is your account moving up over time? You can talk about win-loss ratios all day long. You can be in one of these trading rooms that only does butterflies, that talks about 300 to 1,000% returns all day long. None of that means anything unless your net lick is going up by an amount that is sufficient to support you in the lifestyle that you desire and you live a financially independent life, right? So at the end of the day, net lick is all we care about. Now, why is that important for us? Well, we manage what we call a model portfolio. So we, we call it the model portfolio. And uh, it varies again between about 50 and 35 different positions over time. And it is this that is driving this. And so at the end of the day, and this is of course being a little bit uh, of an exaggeration, but if we had 30 positions open in our account uh, and on any given day, 20 were losing money, okay? We had, we had 20 of them were at a loss and only 10 were at a profit but our account value went up that day, that's a success. That's a success. At the end of the day, this is our bottom line, our net lick. So we focus on that as the, this is important. How many, what's your win-loss ratio? What's your percentage returns? How much actual cash are you putting in your pocket? All of those are important. But at the end of the day, this is what we pay our bills with. This is how we support ourselves. Okay. So when we talk about real diversification versus just spreading money around, this is how we go about trying to create this diversification in our trading room. One is uh, time risk. So there is risk associated with anything that you do in trading. And time is one of those components. Okay, so in our trading room, we have trades that are uh, zero DTEs. You guys have probably heard of zero DTEs. It's just another fancy way of saying a day trade, zero days to expiration. So it's a day trade. And we have things all the way out to one year in time frame. Okay, these have a lot of advantages over these. These have a lot of advantages over these. <laughs> there are no panaceas, everything has a pro, everything has a con. But you should be diversified out over a probably at least one year period of time, in, in my opinion. These zero DTE trading rooms where all they do are day trades, that's all they do in there is zero DTEs. Guys, no one, no professional trader is ever going to tell you that is a good approach to diversification. Nobody is going to tell you that. The person running that trading room is either just too lazy or lacks the knowledge to put a full complement of trades together and build an asset allocation model. It's just simpler to throw out what's popular today, which are zero DTEs. So from a time perspective, there is risk associated with that, right? It's a lot easier to manage a one-year trade it's a lot more profit potential in a zero DTE. So there's pros and cons to each one of these. We ladder out over an entire year for our trades.
Okay. The next area is directional bias. And this is where it does get a little frustrating sometimes when people say, well, you know, yeah, your returns look pretty good. But what's going to happen when the market goes down? Well, that implies that again, all we have is a uh, bullish directional bias on. And, and that is certainly not the case in the way that we trade. Uh, as far as I know, could be wrong, been wrong before. Uh, but there's only three ways that the market can move up, down, or sideways. Okay. Bullish, bearish, or neutral. Those are the only three directional biases that you can have in the marketplace. We always, I, not 99% of the time, 100% of the time have all three. We have all three of these directional biases manifesting in our model portfolio. We always have short positions on. We always have bullish positions on. We always have neutral positions on. There is not a single solitary day that goes by, no matter what the market does, that we don't have positions in our model portfolio that make us money. There's also days that go by that we uh, always have losing positions as well, because you never know on a day in, day out basis what's going to work, right? Uh, but we always know something's going to be clicking for us because we cover every single inevitability that the market can possibly have. We are always short in the marketplace. We are always long. We always have neutral bias positions. So we're always benefiting from whatever the market is doing. And then we are using our dynamic trading approach to scale and adjust and enhance and defend the parts of the market that are getting, that are hurting us. Okay. So you, you got to have more than one directional bias. If you're just buying things and hoping that they go up, that, 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 that's, that's gambling guys. That's not investing. Okay. Uh, portfolio Delta. This, this is the other thing that sort of, again, makes us a little frustrated when people say, well, what's going to happen when, uh, with your, 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 your wonderful trading when the market goes down? Not always. And, uh, it does also, uh, in addition to not always being this way, it, it does ebb and flow. But gen, I will say this, generally speaking, we have a, a negative delta. We have a negative delta overall in our model portfolio. Generally speaking, we would prefer markets to go down rather than up. Our model portfolio is constructing. Now, again, the markets ebb and flow and our deltas ebb and flow, but we are generally trying to construct our model portfolio with a negative overall delta so that when markets go down, we benefit from that. Okay. So this is again, a, a way to diversify strategies. Um, I still get this. Uh, we, we, we still get from time to time people that will cancel, cancel their subscription to our community, our trade, live trading community. And in the comment section, they'll say, yeah, <clears throat> uh, I didn't really like your strategies or your setups or your approaches to trading. It really didn't jive with how I like to trade. Um, that's impossible. <laughs> That is physically impossible that that is ever true because if you have heard of a strategy, we do it. Debit trades, credit trades, spreads, strangles, iron condors, butterflies, broken wing butterflies, ratio trades. It doesn't matter if you've heard of it, we use it in our trading room. When do we use them? Well, we use them when they are the most appropriate, right? We sort of wake up every day and say, hey, we're idiots. We don't know what the market's going to do today. So we just see what it presents to us. And then we apply the trading strategy that we feel is the most appropriate. On day in and day out, that varies from one strategy to another. But we use all different strategies. It is uh, interesting to see people say, yeah, I'm diversified. I've got 15 different underlines and they are... Uh, non-correlated. They're not all equities and, 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 and whatnot, but they use the same strategy on everything. Everything is an iron condor. Everything is a cash secured put. Everything is a covered call, et cetera, et cetera. So they're all going to react the exact same way. Okay. You've got to mix up your strategies. We use over 15 different strategies every week inside of our portfolio. They were like, geez, you just, you know, are you like purposely trying to make this complicated? No, it's just, it's really about making sure that we have 
real diversification. So the strategies that we use uh, are critical. The underlines, okay? So this is a big one. We are really, really big on non-equity correlation. Non-equity correlation. What does that mean? I love the phrase in the market, but not of the market. Oil, nat gas, corn, wheat, soybeans, gold, silver, bonds, lean hogs, the yen. <laughs> All of these things trade in the stock market, but they're not of the stock market. They don't go up and down with the stock market. In fact, a lot of those move inversely to the stock market. Okay, So we trade every one of those that I just mentioned, by the way. We trade every single one of those. We love non-equity correlated items. So it's again, it's a little offensive when someone says, well, what happens if the stock market crashes today? What makes you think that I have things in my portfolio that care what the stock market does? Right. That that this is a higher level of, of understanding of, of diversification. So non-equity correlation is a big, big part to getting real diversification. Risk reward ratios. So again, there's no panacea and everything you can do has a pro and an accompanying con. And it's really just about finding out what is right and best for you. Risk reward ratios are an important part of being properly diversified. Look, we are famous for our zero DTE setups. Nobody does more. We do at least two zero DTEs every day. Sometimes we do them on Sundays with the futures market. Nobody does more zero DTEs out there than we do. Nobody I that I have ever seen has a track record close to ours that gives you a true opportunity to make at least a thousand dollars a day off of zero DTs. Okay, we love them. They're 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 great. <clears throat> zero DTs have horrible. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna put horrible. They have horrible risk reward ratios. They're, they're day trades. No day trade has a good risk reward ratio. It's just how it works. Okay. They have horrible risk. Now, they're still real solid trades. I'm looking at our two that we have on here today. On the SPX, I mean, we're, we're, we've got two hours to go in the trading day here on Thursday, September the 28th. And on my SPX zero DTE, I've got four thousand, no, excuse me. I've got yeah, $4,000 in my SPX trade. And it looks like I'm on track for about $590 of profit on that particular trade. On my NDX trade, uh, I've got about $4,000 in there. And I've got the potential for $664 profit on that setup today. Thousand bucks right there. We're disappointed every day if we don't bring in a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's great. These are crazy hard trades to trade. They're hard to manage. Uh, they can uh, take years off of your life. Um, they're a part of our program and they are critical to our overall success, but they're not the end all be all. And, and they're not certainly anything that you, any day trade is, is never a trade that should be your, your, your end all be all and the only thing that you're focusing on, okay? We have other trades. <clears throat> we try to shoot for on our zero DTs, by the way, about 10%. So if I put up about $10,000, which is pretty close to where I'm at today, if I put up $10,000, I would hope to bring in $1,000 a day, okay? Again, no guarantees, but that's the potential and that looks like where I'm on track for today. Okay, that's great. We also have another trade <clears throat> called the IWM Millionaire Maker that you put up about $3,200 in buying power and you will make about 1.2% a week or about after fees and commissions, about 50% APR, about 50% a year, okay? When we introduced this setup to our trading room, it was the most maligned trade we'd ever introduced. People are like, I, I can make 10% a day over here. Why on earth would I allocate capital to something that's going to make me 1% a week? 
when I can make 10% a day? Well, let me tell you why. This trade right here, we have done going on now four years in a row in our trading community. We've done it, we've done it every single solitary week. We've never skipped a week for four years. We've never had a losing trade. Not one single solitary trade. Okay. This one makes 10% uh, in a day. This one only makes 1% in a week. But this one can be crazy hard to manage. This one, well, so far hasn't been too tough. Okay. So diversifying out your risk reward ratios, doing trades that are purposely low profit potential trades. W would you be okay? If all you made every year for the last four years was 50%, I would. Guys, you don't need more than that. Okay. So risk reward ratio. And then last but not least is a different edge. You have to use software or research or just your, 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 your big brain smarts, whatever you got going for you to figure out some way to create a different edge than everybody else has. If you're doing what everybody else does, you'll have what everyone else has. You're going to get the same results. So you gotta have some kind of a different edge. Now, we could do a whole entire video on this, but I'll just give you a couple for us in here. Uh, one are event contracts. Event contracts give us an edge. These are binary trades. Will the market finish above or below this level? We just closed out uh, a, um, a, a binary trade on the Fed. Would the Fed raise interest rates at this last meeting? Yes or no? There's no guarantees in trading, but they had pretty much already told us that they weren't, that they were going to pause and that they weren't going to raise at this meeting. So we chose the no binary option. 32% uh, rate of return uh, on that trade in one day. Okay, that's edge. That's creating an edge. So event contracts are great. Uh, our insider trading, cider. I know you can't read my horrible handwriting. Insider trading setups. We do some great research. If I if I could just pat myself on the back for a minute, we do some great research on uh, what uh, insiders inside of companies are buying and selling their own company stock legally. I might add, and, and we how can we piggyback on those? We have got uh, three of those trades, uh, two already through disposition, two up and working right now that are really awesome trades. And it's nice to have that confidence because of the research that you put into it. So these are all of the, this is how we diversify. This is why we don't care necessarily what the market does. Uh, and this is why we use Gestalt, uh, looking at the overall picture and focusing on net lick at the end of each day. That's the real key. So wanted to just share that with you because I think our approach to Gestalt, our approach to focusing only uh, and solely on our net lick and uh, how we go about building our model portfolio via diversification, I think maybe that's a little different than what a lot of people are used to. If you want to become part of our live trading community, you can. You can go to tradelivewithus.com. We'd love to have you. We put you through four hours of training. I do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, a little mini mentorship with you as you get going. There's nobody that's going to handhold you as much as you will get here in this live trading community. I think it is the best online trading community out there. If you don't want to Actually, get your feet wet, and I understand that sometimes you can go to askyourtradingquestions.com, shoot me a question, and I can engage you on a lower scale level, okay? Uh, contacts, if you need to get a hold of me, you can go to scottstewartcontacts.com, and as always, folks, I appreciate you. I hope that little tidbit helps uh, you in building your model portfolio and getting the best risk-reward ratios you possibly can. So hopefully that helps, guys. Take care. Talk to you soon.